Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve merge K sorted lists, Leco number 23. So we're given an array of K linked lists called lists, and each linked list is sorted in ascending order. Now we need to merge all of the linked lists into one sorted linked list and then return it. Now a lot of people will get confused by this input, rightfully so. This looks like a matrix because it's like 1, 4, 5, 1, 3, 4, 2, 6. But really what it's saying here is that this outer thing is actually an array so we are given an array, uh, but each of the elements is actually just a node reference. So really it's a reference to the head of a linked list that has a value of one, that then points to four, that points to five. And the second element of the array is this linked list or the node reference to this head here. So it's one to three to four, and this one is two to six. So that's kind of what it says here is you have one, four, five, one, three, four, two to six, and you need to merge them into one sorted linked list. So you just want to return a reference to a linked list node, which is going to be this head here. So either that one or this one will be fine. And they have to be sorted in ascending order. Now, hopefully you've seen the problem merge two sorted lists, where it specifically looks something like this. For that one, you would start with a dummy node, and then you would kind of build up your list from here, where would you prefer one or one? Well, we don't actually care. And so we'll start it at this one. From there, you would then want to point over to this one. This one would want to point to the small element and you'd always want to keep pointing to the smaller one or either if they're equal. So this is how it would go roughly if you were doing merge two sorted lists, but we have more than that. We have in general k sorted lists here. So we're going to keep our dummy node, so that's still helpful here. However, you can't just simply do like a boolean comparison of like, hey, do we want this or this? You'd want particularly the minimum of all of these values. And if you were to get the minimum of those, well, if there's k things, well, to get the minimum, that's going to be a big O of K operation to do that. You'd have to look at all of them and see the minimum. But this problem is in the heap playlist, because if you use a min heap, where you basically put node references into the heap, so we could start by putting all of the first nodes into the heap, it would look something like this. Well, then now looking for the minimum and taking it off is actually a log of K operation here. Okay, so whenever you're kind of repeatedly needing to look at the minimum or maximum of something, think if you can use a heap. And if you can, you're basically going to trade your k time into your log k time. And that's going to be tremendously faster for big values of k. So basically what we did here is we put all of the first nodes onto the heap here. And now if we pop one off, that's basically what we're going to connect up to here. So we want to connect over to this one. And you could think of having maybe a pointer cur where this is cur, we'd point cur dot next to that new one, we would move cur over here so that we carry our chain forward. And to restructure our heap, it would take basically log k time to do that. Now, if this is our original array, basically, we'd have that the first node reference is that second one is that and third is that well, these are node references. So basically, a at zero here, that is a reference that's to the first node and a at one, that is a reference to the first node in the second list and so on. So logically, you would have kind of pointers here to each of these starting references here. And we'll say that we used up this one here. So we'll say that this one one was coming from this list and not from this one. So if it came from this one here, well, we don't ever want to use that one again. So you'd basically want to move over your pointer here. It's basically roughly setting a at zero equal to a at zero dot next because you're just moving over that pointer one as you normally would. Now when we move it over, we also want to put this thing into the heap because it's another thing that could be part of the minimum. We don't know out of these three elements which ones we want to use, we would need to put that into the heap. So again, that's a push that's log k time to do that. And then we know again, that when we popped this off here, we say, okay, we're actually going to point over to this one, we'd move over cur, and then our min heap gets updated like so, and we'd move this node over here, that's basically saying a at one is equal to a at one dot next, we're just moving that reference over. And then we want to put that new node into the heap. So that's going to be put in into there. Okay, so let's do this a little bit quicker here, you would take off the minimum, which is two, you would point over to that, 
move over curve that's going to readjust as so and we would move this reference over we would put this six into the heap notice here that the heap is always stuck at k elements it's always going to have k elements and then we're going to take off the three so we point at that let's just move our heap a little bit over here so we point at the three this is going to get updated like that and then this node reference will be moved over to this one we're going to put that four into the heap and we would move cur over here okay now let's take this off here and we'll point over to that one and we'll say that that four was this one then this node reference would move over and we restructure the heap of course but we don't put anything new into the heap here so this node reference basically a at one here this is now a reference to none and so we're not going to put that into the heap now when we take off from the heap here again we're going to point over to that one and we are going to move over this reference here we would end up putting five into the heap so our heap is just these two elements right here sorry for the confusion here let me just kind of divide these two things so here we would pop off five we're going to point over to that one and this one is empty we would then point over to six to get our full list here and then at the end here notice that all of our pointers are null and at the same time our heap is empty so basically we're going to run this you know basically while we have a heap or while there's elements in the heap okay so that's the idea there is a few complexities to actually coding this up but it's really not too bad and i'll see you there okay so as you saw we are going to use a heap so we will import the heap queue library and we'll start by making an empty heap so just an empty array is how you would do that in python now to set up our heap we want the first node of each linked list in the heap. So we'd enumerate it for each I and node in enumerate the lists. Now we actually have to have an if node here because we actually might have just an empty spot here. Because if you look at this example, we actually have an inner list that's just a none. And so you have to say if you have a node, well then we want to put it on the heap. So we'd heap q dot heap push onto the heap. And we need the tuple of the nodes value because we want them sorted by the smallest node node value. Luckily, heap Q by default uses a min heap. So this will be a min heap. And then you'd want the actual node reference. That's kind of the point of this. But before you do that, you actually also need the index. And the reason for that is because if there is ties in the node values, well, then heap Q will try and actually sort it by the next element of the tuple. And you can't actually sort by node references. So if you just had this, which is really all we want here, you'd actually get an error because Python tries to compare node node basically memory addresses. So if you give it the index as well, then you're guaranteed this as basically like a unique identifier among them. Now it's easiest for these to make a dummy node. So we'll just set D equal to an empty list node here. And so the start of our actual linked list will be D.next and we'll set cur equal to the dummy for now. Okay, then we need to start popping from the heap. So while we have a heap, we want to pop stuff off. We'd get the value, the index I and the node because those are the three things we put on the heap. So we'd get those is equal to heap q dot heap pop from the heap that just pops a tuple off the heap and we immediately unpack into these variables. Now the main point of this is this line cur.next is equal to node. So whatever our current node is, which is originally just the dummy, we want to set the currents next equal to that node. Because we're popping from the heap, we're guaranteed to get the next smallest value. So we'll point to that next smallest node. Then you would want to update cur to be your current node because you just use this node. And so if you move that pointer over, then it allows you to kind of keep that chain building. And then you would want node is equal to node.next. So we're saying we've kind of used up this part of the list node. We want to move this list over to the next reference. Now we don't know if that's actually a node or not, but if it is a node, we want to put that on the heap. So if we have a node, then we want to do the exact same thing we did up here. We just want to push onto the heap the updated node value. It's going to be the same index because if you popped off from the one index here, it's coming from the same list and you want that updated node reference. So this just puts that new updated node reference along with its other information on the heap and once you get out here your actual list is going to be started at dummy.next so if you are to run this that is going to work here that passes the cases and it's going to pass all of these very fast as well okay so let's think about the time complexity here this loop here is going to go through all of the lists if you have k lists well then we're going to push onto the heap k things so this is basically k times you're going to do a log k 
operation because the heap will get stuck at k elements. And then down here, we're saying while we have a heap, you'll have n times here, you're going to interact with the heap, which is stuck at k many things. So this is actually going to be an n log k solution. And you can simply call this just n log k in total because n log k is definitely worse than k log k. Okay, so just to be formal here, the time complexity of this will be big O of n log k, and the space complexity that is due to the heap, which is going to store k things, that will have O of k many space. Okay, drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.